and there we go. So this works extremely well. Hey everybody, it's the Eclectic Candyman here today looking at this vintage quarter inch snap-on torque wrench. It's about 30 years old. Let's check it out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what I have here. Pretty excited about this one. I picked up this vintage snap-on made in the USA quarter inch torque wrench. It is part number QJR117F. This is a traditional hard red case that comes with the snap-on torque wrenches. I believe it was either barely used or not used at all. From what I can tell, it has almost no signs of use. So I wanted to pick this up to complement the other snap-on wrenches that I have. So let's go ahead and take a look at those just briefly. I do have a half inch snap-on torque wrench and I also have this 3 8 inch which I have reviewed on the channel and we'll leave a link up here. Just to show you these before we get into that one. So I have a complete set. This is a flex head snap-on torque wrench and it goes from 15 to 75 pounds. This thing has been so awesome and I've gotten a ton of use out of it. I've had that for a couple of years now. All right, the half inch I've had for like 20 years. This was the one I got a long time ago and it goes from 20 pounds all the way up to 150 pounds. I get a lot of use out of this, whether it's you know torquing down wheels or suspension parts, brakes, and all the like. This one I actually got used, but it was one of the first tools that I picked up. So I used this for years and years, but it doesn't do well in the lower range. So I bought that 3 8 inch torque wrench thinking that it would fill in the gap. Now, while this has been great because it's much smaller with the flex head, as I had shown in my last video, I made an oversight. I thought this went down to five foot pounds, but it went down to 15, which in comparison to the half inch, I'm only getting a difference of about five pounds less because that one goes down to 20. So while this is amazing and widely used, it still didn't hit the lower end range that I needed. So I really did have to go ahead and get a quarter inch like this one here. Let's take a look at this a little bit closer. All right, inside of the case, as typical, we have the service manual. Now, typically with these, it'll give some indication of when this was made. And I can already tell by looking at this warranty card right here that this is from around 1994. And so this is indeed about a 30 year old torque wrench. So it has the typical servicing information in here, you know, how to operate it. It's kind of funny because the picture on the front is like pretty old school. It looks like it's almost like from the 60s or 70s, but it's not quite that old. And it talks about how to torque properly, you know, all the information. It talks about some of the different styles that are included in this series. Now, a little bit of a, a, a background on the manufacturing of this particular one. This torque wrench right here was made by Precision Instruments for Snap-on. So from about 1938 to around 2002, Precision Instruments made the torque wrenches for Snap-on, including this particular model right here. Now it's a quality torque wrench, but there is a downside to that. Since 2002, when Precision Instruments stopped making the torque wrenches for Snap-on, that means that these parts are no longer made or sourced for them. So if this torque wrench breaks, basically there's no way to service it. Now, on my particular use case, a quality tool like this is gonna last a long, long time. I'm not a professional mechanic, so it's not getting daily use. So for me, this is a fantastic use application for the things I'm doing on cars and specialty bolts and stuff like that, or motorcycle or whatever. But for somebody that would be getting into this to buy something like this that you couldn't even service, forget about the warranty because torque wrenches in general don't have that long of a warranty 
they're usually just making sure that it works for you know 90 days or such and then you are on your own but at least if there were parts you could service it but right now there's absolutely nothing wrong with this torque wrench so i can continue to use it but now torque wrenches are made by uh, cdi and many do prefer the digital style torque wrench snap on offers and if you're a professional mechanic but i like the click style so this is an older style i worked in a high performance import auto shop when i was in high school that's where i kind of cut my teeth in the type of tools and all the mechanics there had like mac and snap on and they were using click style snap on torque wrenches and while i'm mostly craftsman for many of my tools when it comes to torque wrenches i've always liked snap on yes i know you can get cheaper alternatives that have better warranty um, that you can return to your local store but i just have always found that that when it comes to quality for certain precision instruments i'm not talking about the company but the nature of the tool itself i do like snap on and it wasn't a very significant investment i think i paid around 100 150 dollars for this all right so let's look closely at this torque wrench so you've got the the kind of diamond grip down here that's standard on all the different snap-on torque wrenches that I have. And this is followed up. Let's look at the inscription on it. So you've got snap-on. It's got the QJR117F. And if you can see it there, USA. Of course, I love made in the USA tools. I do a lot of new, older stock and vintage craftsmen on the channel. Make sure to check out those videos as well. This one, this quarter inch has a locking collar. So locking to the left and it would be unlocked to the right. That's the unlock position and that's the lock position. So you can just simply toggle that back and forth. Once it's in the unlock position, we can see the markings here. So it does start out at 40 inch pounds. All right, so you're talking just a little over three foot pounds and it goes all the way up to 200 inch pounds. We can just turn through in half pound measurements to get where we need to go. And then what you would do is you can just turn that to lock it in place and that would be where you would torque your bolt down. There also up here is the conversion chart right here from inch pounds to Newton meters. And when you convert that, one Newton meter is roughly 8.8 .8 or 9 inch pounds. So anyway, that was just a helpful chart right there. Of course, you have your selector for engaged, uh, you know, whether you're tightening or loosening right there. So pretty basic, you know, definitely a mechanical instrument. You could get send this out and get it calibrated if needed, like all the click style torque wrenches, but I've found this to be quite accurate already based on uh, some of the tests that I've done. And also take a look here just to show the lack of use. Look at this, uh, the head on this torque wrench, just, you know, barely a socket has been added to this. Just in pristine vintage shape, really, really nice quality tool. You can feel it's heavy. You know, you'll have to let me know down below in the comments if you're a mechanic and you use this back in the day or still have one in your toolbox i think this is pretty cool now again the reason that i really wanted to get this torque wrench is because you know there are just times when i just randomly picked here on the motorcycle manual you know where you've got four and a half foot pounds or you know you'd be you know whatever that is you know 48 50 50 some inch pounds whatever that is you know you need a lightweight application for certain bolts and the larger torque wrenches are not going to work. As a bonehead weekend warrior when I was younger, <clears throat> and again, this is not my everyday trade, there were times I would make an oversight and use a big old torque wrench and misread the torque specs and then say it was 30 inch pounds and accidentally have it on 30 foot pounds and snap a bolt right off. I know, go ahead and laugh. Because to be honest with you, it really was, you know, a learning experience. I remember doing it on a banjo bolt on a Honda that I used to have where I just kept torquing and torquing and torquing. And eventually it was like, spoop, spun the head right off. So anyway, that was many years ago. Basically at this point though, when I'm doing a valve cover or lightweight bolts, I need something that's in that lower end range. And because I made that oversight with that 3.8, which was not a mistake of a purchase. Again, it's really good, especially the flex set. I've already used that 
on the other one, but this one is going to really take care of those smaller bolts. So some example applications, I'm gonna go over to the car in a minute and check it out over on the Shelby where I'm installing a throttle body and I'll show this in action, but I've also just recently used it on a BMW valve cover and because it was made out of plastic, it had about 89 inch pounds that it would needed to be torqued to and this was the perfect torque wrench to do that because it would just work for that range much better than my other torque wrenches. So that was a great use of it. But now let's go over the Shelby and check it out and see how it works installing that throttle body. All right, so I wanna go ahead and test this out, this quarter inch torque wrench from Snap-on. I've got this throttle body that I'm installing over here and it needs to be torqued to 89 inch pounds per spec on the four bolts on it. So if we go ahead and get in here, we can see that I've gone ahead, it's a little difficult to see, but I do have it at 89 inch pounds, which is perfect. And the way to do that again is you can unlock, make the adjustment as needed, and then lock the collar again. And then we're ready to go ahead and torque it down. All right, so I've got it snugged up a bit. I'm gonna go ahead. There we go. You see that click? There'll be one single click. And we know that it is properly torqued. It's really nice having this quarter inch torque wrench as compared to the half inch one that I've had for so many years. It's a bit more industrial for larger applications in the suspension and such with this one being able to have those finite inch pound measurements that are so often need in the engine bay and for those smaller bolts over there. Just remember with these click style torque wrenches for longevity of the tool, make sure that you set it back to its lowest setting before you put it in the case for storage. So in this case, I will go back down, there we go, and I will put it right back in the case. That way, the internal mechanism has the least amount of tension built up on it. You know, wrap this up. I'm really happy with this investment. I won't even say it was like a crazy investment on a vintage tool to get a good quality click type torque wrench. You're going to be in this neighborhood anyway. You might ask, why didn't I go with Craftsman? You know, I've told the story before. I had a Craftsman torque wrench 20 plus years ago, and it was my exposure to the fact that not every Craftsman tool back in the day had a full warranty because after about a year of using mine, it had broke. I took it to a Sears store, tried to get a warranty, and they say, we don't warranty it past a, you know, a couple of months or whatever it was. So there's a few things I really like about a high-end quality tool like Snap-on like this. And I think this was, a again, a worthwhile investment. Anyway, let me know what you think about this torque wrench. Now I've got the quarter inch, the three-eighths inch, the half inch. I'm able to feel good about when I'm working on a car that I've torqued to specifications, making sure that everything's the way it's supposed to be. I think this has been a, a great tool to add to the toolbox. Leave a comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I have other tool reviews, vintage tool reviews, and how-to videos on the channel. Make sure you check them out. And until next time, this is the Eclectic Candyman. We'll see you later.